Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. We've been here in Cascais in Portugal for about a week now. Last week I finished installing our new wind vane and this week we hope to get the last pre-Atlantic crossing items checked off the to-do list. My name is Mess, this is my wife Ava. I've spent the last five years on a somewhat extensive refit of our 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That was a DIY fun-packed adventure complete with a very extensive osmosis treatment, building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, rebuilding the entire deck, gutting and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, painting the top sides and a ton of other projects. The summer of 2021 we started cruising full time. Now we're finally ready to begin our adventure. Over the past week it was my job to go through every cabinet, drawer, cupboard, nook and cranny of the boat to organize it and get rid of stuff that we don't need and I kind of went crazy. I was like we don't need it, we don't need this and I have like an entire huge duffel bag full of stuff that we are giving away and I know some people would think that it was a nightmare having to go through every inch of the boat but it was actually really nice and I did go crazy. I might have some giveaway remorse in like a month or two but it felt so good. I highly recommend it. But honestly, we don't need any of it. The only area that we have left to do is the aft cabin and that's a whole other beast and something that Mads and I will have to do together. My next organization task is to go through all of our food, which is in our pantry back here. And that actually seems a lot daunting, like figuring out what we need to provision, like figuring out what we want to eat for four or five weeks. We can't even figure out what we want for dinner each night, let alone like something that we're going to be eating when we're tired and exhausted and the boat's going to be healing. But I actually did a little poll on Instagram and we got a lot of good suggestions. And if you guys have any suggestions for passage meals, that would be awesome. First, I have to stow away all this alcohol that I actually found and random lockers all throughout the boat when I was cleaning. I know there's nothing new in using socks to protect glass bottles. It is an age-old trick, but I especially like to use these fluffy ones. I call them sleep socks because I use them when it is cold outside, but I've been saving mine up for a couple years for this purpose, and I just like them because they're extra fluffy and they just give the bottles a little extra protection, and the bottles just fit really nice inside of them and actually oh yeah this bottle was given to us by one of our patrons brian thank you so much it's vino verde it's a green wine we've never had it before and it's very portuguese so i think actually we will keep this out to have this week thank you so much brian <music> See, don't they look all cute snuggled up together in there? Now for the big mama. Dun, 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 dun. To be honest, I'm still surprised and proud of us of how organized this still is. It's usually this bottom row that gets stuff shoved into it, but I'm telling you, this has been so nice to keep all of our food. When I initially did the pantry, I made a list of everything that was in it with the intentions of keeping track and marking things off when we take things out and I can confirm that I have done that zero times. I'm going to update the list and hope that I will keep doing so when we're crossing the Atlantic. My thinking is that we will have nothing else to do that we will be so excited to update the pantry list when we take something out. Maybe I'll finally get around to labeling all the containers too. Real quick I have to show you guys something very exotic we found here at Aldi. They are hot dogs from Trader Joe's. These look very, very exotic. Looking forward to trying them. And also it's very necessary to keep a sailboat cookie cutter. Okay, enough fooling around, time to get to work. So far our only casualties are these three bread mixes. It does get pretty damp inside of the lacquer, which is why we try to only keep long lasting food in there. But I put these in there with the intention to pull them out, but of course forgot and 
now they are very moldy. Here's a quick tip of something that I have grown to love. It's these powdered eggs. They're not actual eggs. I really don't know what they are, but it's like a powdered egg that you use as an egg replacement for baking. And it's really nice if you have run out of eggs or don't have eggs and of course you can't eat them like eggs, but they're great for baking. I've gone through the entire pantry and have written everything down. So now I have a better idea of what we need. I'll also probably reorganize all this once we have all of our provisions, but this isn't the only food storage we have. We have storage under the floor in the saloon and also under the city and behind the city. So this is just what we like to use on a daily basis. It's just nicer and easier, especially when we're sailing. But I have a feeling that once we're done provisioning, there's going to be food in every nook and cranny aboard Athena. The very last item on the organization list was the much dreaded aft cabin, AKA the garage. It took an entire day, but we eventually got everything sorted and organized. The first locker over here in the settee now contains everything we should need in an emergency or for a quick repair. So that means in case the boat is leaking, if we need emergency steering, our ditch bag is in here. Also stuff like a bunch of soft shackles, the most commonly used tools, stuff like that. With that done, we can now close not only the organize all lockers task, but also the organize emergency items task. And yesterday I cheated a little bit and took care of that cable that had popped out of the fiberglass dodger and got that shoved back in there. So we can also go ahead and close this task, the fix loose cable in dodger. Our meal plan is well underway. We've almost figured out what we want to eat on the trip to the Canaries and also on the Atlantic crossing. We have a rigger swinging by the boat tomorrow. And I think we're going to get started on this one next, the dish organizer. As you can see by my overalls, that means it's DIY time. And what are we DIYing? We are DIYing our little dish organizer, our dish holder for inside of this cabinet. Don't mind this bottom area. I have big plans for that. But what I wanted to show you is what we have been doing for our plates. We've been using, of course, our trusty tape and this like rubber non-skid stuff that you usually use in kitchens just to make sure that the plates aren't sliding back and forth. Job. Oh, it's dirty. I gotta wipe it. There you go. No, boo. What do you think? People are going to think we're animals. That's going in the video. <laughs> so what do we do next? There are many things I love about my dear wife. Her ability to build stuff is not one of them. <laughs> okay, so I think a good next step would be to figure out where the plates are going to sit. Okay. And then mark where we should drill the holes. Okay. And then I, I will... I was thinking the same thing. Oh, you were? Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> then uh, I will find a drill that matches this meanwhile. Okay, yeah, you find the perfect size <laughs> and I'll do this. Yeah. This is my bag with the most commonly used tools amongst them, Mr. Caliber. There's not a lot of room in there. Luckily, there's just enough for the three sets of dishes. But what I did to mark the position was just flip the plates upside down on the shelf and then just trace them with a pencil. While Eva was doing that, I found a 12 millimeter drill and the tools we need. The hole this is going to make is going to be somewhat unprecise, but we'll use thickened epoxy and that should compensate for that. Oh, that's a delightfully unprecise uh, circle there, Levy. <laughs> you didn't say it had to be precise. I don't know. Let's see. Seven plus the thickness of this, which is 12 millimeters. So 8.2. Okay. While Ava was busy cutting our wooden dowels to length, I sat out in the cockpit and rounded over all of the tops of them with the drill and a bit of sandpaper so they're nice and smooth. We were gonna epoxy these in place, but it actually turns out we got a pretty snug fit out of that drill. So I think we'll just let it be a friction fit and that should be plenty enough to hold those plates. Ta-da! One dish organizing doohickey. That's certainly a lot more elegant than all that blue tape. And that means we can now close the dish organizer task. Bam! 
On the Atlantic crossing, we shouldn't need the engine, but I want to make sure that it's ready in case we do. The oil change interval on the D240 is 500 hours or 12 months. We're still within that, but better safe than sorry. A while back, I installed a little gear pump to help with oil changes. It takes up less room than one of the big vacuum doohickeys, and there's also no hand pumping involved. With the oil nice and warm, I turned off the engine and sucked out all of the old engine oil before replacing both the oil filter and also the fuel filter. I should really also change the coolant. We're coming up on 500 hours and I think that's the interval for that. We have coolant here aboard the boat to do it, but to do it in a clean, neat fashion, I need a small section of 12 millimeter hose, which the chantlery here doesn't have. So I'll hold off on the coolant until we get to the Canary Islands, but at least we can go ahead and close the oil change task. Also yesterday, not only did I download charts for the Navionics app on our phones, I also downloaded charts for our Garmin chart plotters, and I updated all of the firmware and all of our navigational aids just to make sure that everything is up to date. So we can also go ahead and close the charts task. Hi guys, and welcome to Medical Hour with Dr. Ava. Just kidding, I am not a doctor, definitely not. And you should take everything I say in the next segment with a grain of salt. And of course, consult your own doctor to see what is best for your crew aboard your boat. But I wanted to share with you guys what we have in these babies which is our medical kit. Now, I know the contents of medical kits are gonna vary from boat to boat, depending on what you want and what you need. So that's why I'm not gonna go over each individual item that we have, but more of an overview of what's in our offshore medical kit and how we organize it. I like to keep our medical kit organized in two boxes. It's really easy to remember. This one's called the Big Mama, and this one's called the Little Mama. The Big Mama has more serious things like antibiotics and pain medications, whereas the Little Mama has more everyday things and over-the-counter meds. But first, let's take a look at the Big Mama. We got our more serious medication before we left Denmark last summer. We got a list of recommended meds from the Danish Cruising Association, and we will leave a link to that down below. But then we took that list to Mad's doctor, and he sat down with us and decided what we need or what he thinks we would need. And then it was really nice. He sat us down and went through every single medication that he gave us, told us how to use it, what dosage, when we would need it for, and and that, along with the medication, is what is in this box. First things first, I have a master list of all the contents in the box. And this is has the medication's name, the dosage, how to use it, exactly how the doctor told us to. So I type that up, put it on this list. And I also keep all the medications in different categories, like stomach issues, eye pain, antibiotics, bacterial infections, just so if something happens, we can pull out the box and be like, oh, what do we have for allergies? And just have a list of what we have right here on hand. And that's kind of how I organized the contents of the box too. Well, that's exactly how I organized it. So I have a bag here, a big bag that says bacterial infections. There's no mistaking what's in here. And then inside the big bag, there are smaller bags with the medication. And then I also printed out how to use this medication in the dosage like the doctor told us. And I just did that because I don't want us to have to figure out how to use each medication. I have a feeling we'll be using these in emergencies. So I think just knowing exactly how to use it and having nice labels will make it a lot easier in those situations. This was the big mama, and now it's time to see what is in the little mama. And like I said before, this is more everyday stuff, like first aid bandages and stuff like that. We have a first aid kit in our go bag and in our aft cabin locker in case we need it, but this is just extra because, you know, redundancy. It's good to have lots. And then over-the-counter pain medications like Tylenol, Ibuprofen, those are always nice and necessary to have and then just like over the counter like stomach stuff like Maalox and stuff and of course giant bag of seasickness pills and a ton of COVID tests. Also, I just wanted to mention that our first aid kit that we keep in the aft locker, it's just like a general first aid kit and it has stuff like one of those staple guns in case one of us needs staples. Oh, Mads and I always argue over who that would be worse for, having to get the staples or give the staples. 
but hopefully we never have to worry about that. Uh, again, fingers crossed. But Mads also touches on that in our video about our emergency grab bag, so you can take a look at that there. And if there is anything outside the realm of general first aid that you guys have felt has been really helpful on your passages that you've just been like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad we had that in an emergency, please let us know down below. That would be awesome to hear. And also, just remember, I am not a doctor, and please talk to your medical professional before you get anything for your medical kit or you do anything medical. Later in the day, we headed to the supermarket to do our big provisioning run of long-last items. We'll still get some stuff in the Canaries, but getting the bulk of the stuff here in mainland Europe should be cheaper. Shopping for groceries where you don't speak the language is always fun. Thanks to the marvel that is Google Translate, we discovered a new classification of milk as kind of fat. Turns out the grocery store offers delivery for only a few euros, which was a big help. We got everything unpacked inside of the boat to be able to better organize it. Turns out food for two people for a month and a half takes up quite a bit of room. So what's going on, Ava? Very anxious right now <laughs> because I don't know where we're gonna put all this stuff. I don't know. Like, it's a lot of stuff. And we just gotta figure it out. Just gotta do it. Start putting stuff, shoving stuff in places. Do you think we'll find a place for everything? Yep. Okay. <sighs> We started organizing all of the food, keeping items like snacks and very heavy items like milk and iced tea readily available underneath the cabin sole. Despite Ava's concerns, everything did fit and we have room for even more stuff. The last step was to get the meat vacuum sealed and packed in the freezer. To be able to figure out what groceries to buy, we first made a meal plan. We haven't touched on that in this video, but we may touch on that in one of the upcoming videos. And because we now have the meal plan and also all of the groceries, we can now close these two tasks. Earlier today, the rigger swung by with our new sheets, so we can also close this task. These are our new sheets, and the thing that's different about these is that they're 16 millimeter on the aft end of the sheet, but then the forward end here is tapered down to something a lot thinner, more like 12 or 10 millimeters. The reason for this contraption is because our winches here are an old, very specific Luma type that only accepts 16 millimeter line up here in the self tailor, otherwise, it won't grip up there. But the 16 millimeters is very tight to get through our spinnaker poles. I'm hoping with this much thinner forward part of the line, it'll be easier for us to furl our two head sails with the spinnaker poles in place. As you can see, there are not a lot of tasks left on the board. And in fact, the air conditioning is not going to get delivered to here. There's a bit of a shipping situation going on there. So we won't have to wait for that. And the very last item that's left in to do, I should get that today so I can fit those tomorrow. And it looks like we might possibly have a weather window for the 700 nautical mile passage to the Canary Islands next week. The reason I say might is because depending on which forecast model we look at, the beginning of the week looks absolutely great. That would be a downwind sail, not a whole lot of wind, but it would be okay. But then as we get to the end of the week, which is when we will be down in this area here, there's a big swirly thing rolling in, at least on this forecast model. And that would give us about 30 knots worth of headwind here, which yeah, that wouldn't be good. So if you don't mind, please cross your fingers for that weather window. Yeah, I think we're very much ready to get to the Canaries. Indeed so. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we hope to see all of you guys back here at Athena next week for yet more whatever we'll be doing fun. Yeah. So uh, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See, see you. you.